Coronavirus causes rise in sovereign citizens movement. Today, we're going to take a look at an article out of the New Zealand Herald published on May 16th, 2020. The article begins, from baseless concerns about 5G technology to elaborate schemes involving that bloke that made a matzah out of Microsoft, I have no idea what that is. The coronavirus pandemic has been fertile ground for conspiracy theorists. I believe we can all agree with that, especially if we're on social media at all. However, it's also shown a light on one of the most bizarre offshoots of the genre, the concept of the sovereign citizen. And I believe I said this in earlier videos that we were going to see more of this from the pandemic and the pandemic was going to feed this. Not the queen, although she is indeed sovereign, but the idea that if you so wish, you can choose what lies, what laws apply to you, if any do at all. That theory had a loud and rowdy entrance into the coronavirus arena in normally law-abiding Singapore earlier this month. And we covered this lady on some prior episodes. Amid an outbreak of COVID-19 cases, the city-state of Singapore, which is like this tiny city country, mandated the wearing of masks in public. One woman who reportedly had lived in Australia prior to Singapore reportedly did not agree. She went to Australia to get her sovereign citizen training, it appears. On May 5th, the woman was stopped by police after it's alleged she failed to wear a mask when at a hawker market. Police said it wasn't the first time. It's also alleged the 40-year-old ate at a table in the food court, also on the current list of no-nos. Uh, and before we uh, dig into the rest of the article, everybody, thank you for joining me. I'm Joe Pometto. This is the Common Sense Academy. We cover sovereign citizens, First Amendment auditors, and people behaving badly. If you like my content, go ahead and give me a subscription. Trying to get to 10,000 subscriptions, I'm almost there. Majority of my viewers are not subscribed. Go ahead, give me a subscribe if you are new to the show. We have another ritual. Uh, we all take a sip together because it tastes better when we sip together a little bit of coffee with your morning sovereign citizen rant your morning youtube videos or perhaps your late evening youtube videos raise your cup in the air it tastes better when we sip together cheers the article goes on I'm a sovereign. In a video reportedly from the confrontation, the woman claimed she was sovereign and therefore was able to ignore the rules, according to Singapore's Straits Times. I'm a sovereign. This is something people are not going to know what it is, she said. Yeah, none of us truly know what it is. It means I have nothing to do with the police. It means I have no contact with the police. They have no say over me. Boy, wouldn't that be a nice world. A man who is off screen responded, this doesn't even make any sense. If you're a person in Singapore, you have to follow the rules of Singapore. Oh yeah. She was charged with one count of being a public nuisance and three counts of violating COVID-19 rules. At the court hearing the next day, newspaper reported the woman is saying she extended my sovereign immunity. She had extended that to her attorney. I am a living woman and that is my only capacity in this matter. She was remanded at a mental health facility ahead of her next court appearance on May 19th. We'll have to check up, see what happens. A local Chinese newspaper reported she was a physiotherapist who had lived in Australia for 20 years. It's not the only time where the sovereign citizen movement has potentially cropped up recently. Guess where else? On Pete Evans' Instagram, of course, although not from the chief cum conspiracy theorist himself, but his followers. Who is this Pete Evans? Is he the conspiracy theorist of, uh, of New Zealand? On one of Evans' posts, which claimed to show the links between pharmaceutical companies looking into COVID-19 vaccines, a follower implored people to open our hearts and to stand together for sovereignty. At the recent anti-lockdown rallies in Sydney and Melbourne, banners referred to several key phrases and concept use, concepts used in the movement. And you'll see that in my book. Uh, sovereign citizen movement is syncretic in nature. So it borrows from other movements. Other movements borrow from it. Extremist movement. So what is it? Well, like many of the most far-fetched theories, it stems from the United States. Shout out to my country. We'd, we, uh, we, we may have most of the loons. We don't have a monopoly on them, but we may have most of them. 
Um, it stems from the United States, where there has always been a vocal minority who reject any form of overarching government. And I, listen, I am one of those people that wants to see, uh, wants to object to overarching government. The U.S.-based Southern Poverty Law Center has mentioned the Sovereign Citizens Movement under a list of extremist organizations. Sovereign citizens believe they get to decide which laws to obey and which to ignore, and they don't think they should have to pay taxes, the center said. It claimed the movement has its roots in white supremacy and outlandish conspiracy theories that are anti-Semitic in nature. Dr. Matthew Marcus a lecturer in psychology at Trobe University who has looked into trust and conspiracy theories said movements like sovereign citizens flare up when society is in flux. During times of crises and uncertainty, groups like these and other fringe conspiracy groups they become more important to people, he said. Marcus also said there was evidence to suggest that three underlying motives were at work that rationalized these theories for adherence. In worrying times, delving deep into a subject, even if it was way off the mark, gave a sense of certainty and increased knowledge. It also helps to maintain a safe and stable environment. Thirdly, it gave people social status within a group. Um, I, I think uh, another motive is that these people want to scam people and they can make money off of it. Um, I think that needs to be noted there because I would I, I don't have stats to back this up, but I would venture to say the 2007 2008 recession saw a sharp rise in sovereign citizenship. Hanging out with other like-minded people may seem appealing to satisfy some of these needs for people who feel marginalized, the professor said. Some laws, not others. Some lockdown protesters unwittingly or deliberately appear to have borrowed from elements of the movement. That's that syncretic nature. Such as the U.S. parents who argued with police that laws preventing their kids from using playground equipment were invalid or didn't apply to them. Or at the recent coronavirus rallies, banners were displayed referring to the Magna Carta. Sydney mum Renee Altacritti, mum, M-U-M, that's funny, whose child was taken from her arms as she resisted arrest for breaking social distancing rules, bore a placard that said, if you don't know your rights, you don't have any. Magna Carta. <laughs> Listen, everybody, I love the Mag Magna Carta as much as anybody else, but um, it's not going to protect you in this day and age. It's not known if she subscribes to the sovereign citizen movement. Whereas your average citizen tries to change laws by voting and appealing to those who craft laws, politicians, sovereign citizens invoke the Magna Carta. And that's how I agree it should be done. Dating from 1215 England, it's one of the world's first legal documents. While many sections of it remain in British and Australian law, which is actually super cool, the legal system has evolved since the 13th century. Yeah, by a lot. Sovereigns might recognize passages from the Magna Carta as well as parts of the U.S. Constitution they agree with, but ignore the bits they're not fussed about, and that is exactly one of the problems. The movement can be something of a rabbit hole. Some believe there is a secret parallel legal system in that the general public unwittingly enters into a contract with the government. Yes, a lot of them believe that. Sovereigns believe they can wiggle out of this so-called contract by filling verbose and often nonsensical legal papers, which if done in exactly the right way can game the system, making them exempt from modern laws. That would also mean they don't have to pay a tax, which is a bit of a side benefit. I wouldn't necessarily call it a side benefit. For many of them, that's the main deal. Problem with self-proclaimed sovereignty. Usually sovereigns have pretty mundane aims. They might argue they don't have to pay a speeding fine because they are not subject to it. One of Australia's most notable followers is Wayne Glue of Geraldton, Western Australia. I'll have to look into this guy. He declared himself a sovereign citizen and in 2018 argued he didn't have to pay $300,000 in rates and legal fees to the council because local governments were unconstitutional. When the council tried to seize his land, he said, they cannot touch it because, it hel because he held it under, yep, Clause 61 of the Magna Carta. He has some crazy misconception that the laws do not apply to him, and regrettably, we have been forced to take action to seize his property to cover costs that rightfully belong to the ratepayers. Ratepayers, that's interesting. Um, more uh, Aussie uh, New Zealand language. Said Gerald Ten Mayor Shane Van Snyne. But true believers have also turned to murder. In 2010, the U.S. state of Memphis 
Jerry Kane and his son Joseph shot dead two police officers when they were pulled over during a routine traffic stop. The pair later died in a shootout. Yes, that's a notorious, um, a notorious sovereign citizen act of violence. There's nothing to suggest most sovereign citizens would resort to violence in any way, or even that many of the followers would know of the movement's foundations. I agree with that. But the crushing reality for sovereign citizens is that they are indeed subject to the law. They can rail against it, question its validity, and even slow down the process. However, as the woman who refused to wear the mask in the market will likely find out, her case will still make its way through the Singaporean legal system, whether she chooses to recognize it or not. Singaporean politician, uh, something something, Sean Mugam, I'll give a shot at the last name, I'm not going to do the first name, said in a social media post that she proclaimed herself sovereign uh, was well and good, but then such people should not live within society. She should not expect any of the benefits that come from this system of governments, including her security and medical care. And friends and family, that's something that I've been saying from the very beginning with these sovereigns. They want to claim all the benefits of our, our society without, without any of the detriments, any of the rules that they have to follow. They want to call uh, United States and, and valid currency fiat money, but then they have no problem scamming people for that fiat money so that they can, I don't know, go to Walmart or buy a new car or pay their bills. Um... It's all loony. I knew I had a I had a very strong intuition that the coronavirus was going to increase this. The thing about the coronavirus is number one, it's new. There haven't been that many global pandemics, uh, and certainly not any in my lifetime. The Wu flu was in the ninth, late 1960s. So this type of thing is new. It's scary. It's from a foreign country. It is ripe fodder for conspiracy theories. It's also an invisible or unseen enemy, though we can see its effects. And those are always, always, those types of things are very ripe grounds for things like conspiracy theories. And we're seeing flare-ups everywhere. Sovereign Citizen is on the rise. They're burning down 5G towers. They're connecting 5G to coronavirus. It is all loony. Um, so we'll continue to monitor the Sovereign Citizen Movement. Thank you very much for joining the Common Sense Academy. If you like my show, sign up for my email list. There is a link in the description. You'll get a free his PDF of a history of the Sovereign Citizen Movement written by myself. And stay tuned for my book on Sovereign Citizens coming out soon. I know I've been saying that for a while, but trust me, it's going to be soon. Thank you very much.